um, let's just open up. So hello everyone. My name is Chris Ellis. I'm with the Parkinson's Foundation and I'm your host for today's Mindfulness Monday session. So uh, just to touch base, Mindfulness Monday changes every Monday. So we try different techniques, try different tips and tricks on how to be more mindful in our daily journey with Parkinson's disease. And so last week we played some fun mindful games. We didn't get really into a deep uh, meditation practice. So I want to just really preface um, how Mindfulness Mondays does differ every day so that we can find something that works well for you because what works well for me or your peer might not work well for others. So today will be a little bit different session from our first time, our first session of May, can't believe it. Um, so welcome everyone back to the Parkinson's Foundation's Mindfulness Monday. Again, if you're new here, everyone will be muted for the duration of today's session. The chat is open, feel free to share comments, questions, where you're tuning in from, your role in Parkinson's disease. Uh, you'll see that a lot of people are joining us on video. We do love to see you guys. So if you're comfortable with it and capable, please do feel free to uh, share your camera, being mindful of what the camera is pointing at. Our next live English session will be May 16th with Dr. Taylor Rush from the Cleveland Clinic. And just, um, just to preface that this will probably be the last, I believe it's the last English session, live English session for the month of May. Uh, the following week is our Spanish session. And then the week after that is Memorial Day. So um, after next Monday, we'll see you guys live um, in June. So here's a list of our PD Health at Home programs. Again, next Monday with Dr. Taylor Rush for Mindfulness Monday. This Wellness Wednesday, we're having our social engagement um, program, Smile Through Art Part Two. So if you were in Part One, do come back. It's so much fun. Through creativity, cognition, and movement, creative neurology, Smile Through Art workshops target specific areas of Parkinson's disease. So those living with Parkinson's are able to find relief in their symptoms, including a, high, a heightened level of mood and increased fine motor abilities through attending the Smile Through Art workshop. So you can join us uh, this Wellness Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time for part two of our social engagement Smile Through Art series. And the Fitness Fridays, every, fit, every Friday we post a new video on our YouTube channel and our parkinson.org slash pdhealth website. And our next live Fitness Friday will be on May 20th. Want to give thanks to our sponsor, the Light of Day Foundation. Their generosity makes PD Health at Home possible. And if you're new to Parkinson's disease or just running through the strides of Parkinson's disease, have advanced Parkinson's disease, have a question about a loved one who's living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation is here for you. Our website's posted up there on the screen, parkinson.org, or you can call us at one 800 4 pd info or email helpline at parkinson.org. So that's all I've got for you guys. I'm going to pass the screen, the mic, over to our expert, Dr. Catalina McInerney at the University of Miami. Dr. McInerney. Hi, everyone, and welcome, and thank you so much for coming to this session. Uh, for those of you who have not met me, I am uh, Dr. Catalina McInerney. I am a neuropsychologist at the University of Miami with the Division of Neuropsychology and Cognitive Neuroscience. Uh, also, thank you so much for the Mindfulness Monday program through the Parkinson's Foundation for inviting me today. This is such a wonderful program and I am so I'm just very grateful to be here and to be able to, uh, to take part. I am going to spend a few minutes talking about another benefit of mindfulness for the brain. After that, I will guide you through a mindfulness exercise. And when we finish the exercise, I will leave some time for discussion and to answer any questions that you might have. All right, so let's get started. So for decades, the prevailing dogma in neuroscience was that by the time we reached adulthood, our brains were done developing. So the brain cells that we had in our brains that was it, and if we lost any, they were gone and gone forever. And it was pretty much all downhill. Once your brain finished developing, it started deteriorating and all downhill from there. Um, 
But research in the last few years, really the last few decades, has overthrown that dogma. In its place has come the realization that the adult brain retains really impressive powers of what we call neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity is the ability to, um, to change its structure and its, fu its function in response to experience. And these aren't any like minor tweaks either. Now we know the brain can form new connections and sort of rewire itself late in life. Good examples of that are the strides in rehabilitation that people make following a stroke or a brain trauma, even late in life. So we can still, um, neuroplasticity is still happening. There's generation of new neurons, new connections throughout our life. Study after study has shown that the practice of mindfulness has a positive effect on the brain. It helps us maintain and regenerate gray matter and neuronal connections. So as we get older, we see changes, right? We see changes in our skin. We see changes in our hair, in our bones. It is also normal to see changes in our brains as we get older. The volume of gray matter in our brains, gray matter it, uh, contains the most of the brain's neuronal cell bodies and serves to process information. So that gray matter in our brains reduces as we get older. Just like other areas in our bodies change, so does the gray matter, it tends to shrink a little bit. But several studies have shown that mindfulness practice helps preserve and even regenerate that gray matter. So when there have been studies comparing the brains of experienced meditators and non-meditators in older age, they have shown that meditators, um, th their gray matter hadn't reduced as it would be expected to reduce with age. So there was less, um, le less shrinkage of the gray matter. According to these studies, meditation had a neuroprotective effect on the meditators. It protected the brain from some of the effects of aging. Other studies have found that mindfulness practice was associated with an increase in thickness in the prefrontal cortex of the brain. That's the part just above the eyes, and it's associated with attention. So just like exercise helps keep your body young and strong, Mindfulness helps keep your brains healthy as we age. You can think of mindfulness as a good exercise for the brain, or if you prefer the analogy as a way to nourish the brain so it remains nice and strong, like a plant that you care for and that you offer nutrients and attend to. So I hope this gives you another snippet of a little idea of how, how mindfulness is helpful and healthy for the brain. Now I have a brief exercise planned for you. If you are new to this, and even if you're not, it's worth remi uh, remembering that it's normal for your brain to wander. When you notice that your brain is wandering, just it's a really nice moment of awareness. Appreciate that moment of awareness and come back to the exercise back to focusing on your breathing. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to, this exercise will take a little bit less than 20 minutes. Um, and so we'll have a couple minutes at the end for questions and answers. All right. To begin, settle into a comfortable position with your back straight and resting your hands comfortably in your lap or on the table in front of you. Gently close your eyes and prepare yourself to relax. Breathing in and out. Breathing fully, deeply. Breathing at your own pace. Breathing in through the nose if possible. If it's not possible, it's okay. 
And breathing out either through your mouth or through your nose, whichever is more comfortable for you. Continuing to breathe in and out at your own pace. Preparing yourself to experience calm, to feel quiet, to know peace. Do not try to make anything happen. Rather, allow yourself to let go of the tension of controlling anything. Focusing your thoughts on your breathing and allowing yourself to watch the relaxation you feel spread to all parts of your being. Focus on breathing naturally, but controlled, slow, deep breaths, focusing your thoughts on your breathing, Noticing how it feels when the air flows in and out of your body. Begin to sink down and be supported by your surrounding environments. Begin to withdraw your thoughts from your surroundings and to center your focus inward on the peace and stillness within you. Each time you inhale, noticing how your body fills itself with oxygen. Notice how it feels when your body is full of oxygen. And each time you exhale, allow yourself to relax a little more, only up to the point where you feel comfortable relaxing. Breathing in and filling your body with oxygen. Exhaling and relaxing, allowing your body to sink a little more into relaxation. If you become aware of thoughts running through your mind, notice these thoughts, but know that you do not need to worry about or judge these thoughts. Simply allow them to pass and return to your breath and this moment. As you focus on your breathing, you can say to yourself, I am relaxed, I am calm, I am comfortable. I am relaxing into the supports around me. My mind is beginning to quiet down. My body is relaxed, I am at peace. As you breathe in and out, notice how your heart pounds softly, gently on your chest, rhythmically. And allow the rhythm of your heart to carry you in a rhythmic motion. Hear your breath whooshing in and out of your body. Tuning into the rhythms of your own body. Your 
Your heartbeat is steady, like the sound of a clock ticking. Your breathing is regular and deep. Your eyes are closed. The rhythms of your body carry you further and further into a deep state of relaxation. Imagine yourself carried into a meadow. You're in a beautiful meadow with mountains all around you. Continuing to breathe in and out at your own pace, focusing your thoughts on your breath as it goes in and out of your body. And imagine yourself in a beautiful meadow with mountains all around you. Imagine yourself lying on your back on a protective cocoon. You are safe and at peace in your protective cocoon. From your protective cocoon, you can see your meadow and the beautiful mountains all around you. Breathing in and out at your own pace. If other thoughts interrupt this exercise, or if you're having difficulty with imagery, simply notice that and come back to your breathing and to the imagery as much as possible. If you're having difficulties with imagery, simply continue breathing in and out and focusing your, fo your thoughts on your breathing. Continue breathing and imagine yourself in your protective cocoon, as safe as you can be in this meadow, surrounded by mountains, Allow your mind to wander and notice the clouds above you. Imagine the clouds start coming and a thunderstorm starts approaching. You are safe in your cocoon, noticing as the clouds darken and the rain starts to pour. You can hear the water dropping. You can sense the energy of the rain all around you. As the rain intensifies, you feel the storm getting stronger and stronger, but remain safe and relaxed in your cocoon. Continue breathing, listening to the sound of the rain. Noticing the storm becoming stronger as you watch from your safe cocoon. As the storm strengthens, you see a bright light flashing and the lightning is soon followed by the crack of thunder. Breathing in and out, watching as the clouds move all around you, listening to the storm, the water, the wind, the thunder, watching the leaves blow in the rain, watching the lightning fall, 
continuing to breathe, knowing you are protected in your cocoon, you are safe and at peace. Visualize that rain starting to lessen the space between the lightning and the thunder becomes wider and wider. As the storm moves further away, you hear less and less noise. It grows progressively quieter and quieter as the storm moves into the distance. Continue breathing in and out at your own pace. Breathing in oxygen, breathing out and relaxing. Feel yourself letting go as the storm passes. Let the quiet after the storm carry you back into a deep state of relaxation. As you drift into relaxation with the passing of the storm, notice the freshness of the wet green glass and the leafy trees around you. Continue breathing in and out. Breathing at your own pace, deeply and controlled. Oxygenating your body as you breathe in. And each time you breathe out, allowing yourself to relax a little bit more, allowing yourself to be present in your body, present in this moment. If there are thoughts coming through your head, any difficulties with imagery, it is okay. Simply notice those thoughts, notice those difficulties, and let them pass. Focus on your breathing as you inhale and exhale, breathing in oxygen, exhaling and allowing yourself to relax just a little more. Noticing how you were able to watch a storm go by, surround you, yet remain calm and peaceful. Observing as the rainstorm moved away. Observing the clouds pass, the skies start to become blue again. Continue breathing and notice the colors changing as the sky brightens. All the mountains and the meadow fresh from the rain that passed. You might start hearing birds chirping, start noticing a slight breeze and the heat of the sun starting to come. 
Continue breathing slowly, controlled, but at your own pace. Just as you watch the storm go by, learn to notice your thoughts and notice which thoughts are unnecessary, causing chaos, and simply watch them to pass, just like you watch the storm pass. Get very skilled at letting unnecessary thoughts go, allowing any thoughts that are not aligned with your deepest truth to pass through without judgment. I will give you one minute to continue breathing in silence, enjoying this moment of relaxation, continuing to breathe in and out, Allowing yourself to relax just a little more. I will let you know when the minute is up. Continue breathing in and out at your own pace. Bringing in oxygen to your body and breathing out and allowing your body to relax. Breathing in and out at your own pace. Prepare to bring yourself back to this room, back to the surfaces that support you, back to the gentle, steady rhythms of your breathing. Come back to this room, relaxed and refreshed from your thunderstorm. Having allowed yourself to slow down your pace of life during relaxation, allow yourself to gently ease back into your daily activities that are likely faster paced. Now, whenever you are ready, you may slowly open your eyes. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for you. I know imagery can be a little bit uh, tricky sometimes, but kudos to anyone who gave it a shot. And when you can't do imagery, just focus on your breathing, continue doing the breathing exercises. That's always going to be good for you. It took me a little longer than I had planned for. I think I got a little lost on it myself, uh, but I'd love to answer a couple of questions before our time is up. Thank you, Dr. McInerney. Do you have a question? Did someone write you? Um, looking through the chat, I'm not seeing any particular questions. I'm curious if anyone thought that that one minute <laughs> was the longest minute that they've had all day. <laughs> anyone else feel that way or did it fly by? It's interesting when you're asked to sit in stillness and with your breath and your own thoughts for just a minute that it can feel mm -hmm. very challenging. And then as we go through our daily to-dos, tasks, a minute just flies by. It's amazing. That tends to be very, very common uh, for 
that minute to seem to take forever. Um, and, you know, it's when in that minute you notice how many thoughts can come into your brain. That's what happens throughout our daily life. We have so many thoughts. Um, and so I was, you know, and sometimes those thoughts cause a little bit of chaos in our lives. So when we become skilled at looking at those thoughts and seeing which thoughts we can really let go of and not struggle with so much at any particular time mm -hmm. or levels of stress, your levels of anxiety really go, go down. I had one person was, write me that um, the one minute flew by for them. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> Um, Heather said that um, counting helps her keep track of her breath and stay focused. So maybe that's something we can do in the future is um, some pranayama, as you call it in yoga, some breathing techniques where you count your inhale and count your exhale. So that might be something we work on, Heather. Thanks for mentioning that. Uh, Joseph sure. wants to know, how often do we need to meditate to show positive results that you alluded to in the beginning of our practice? So the studies that have been done typically are with people doing 20 minutes, 20 daily minutes of mindfulness for eight weeks. So those are the, when people do it in controlled studies, that's in, with short-term practice, that's usually what it is, 20 minutes a day for um, eight weeks. And that, and you already see some changes in the brain after those eight weeks. However, don't force yourself to have to do those 20 minutes a day. It's all about building a, a skill and a, a, a routine for yourself. If you can do one minute a day of mindfulness, you have a leg up. And then as you feel that you need more, you can increase it, but never feel that you're doing too little or too much. Whatever you can do is going to be helpful for you. Great. Bernard, I see your direct question to me. I will write to you personally in a moment. And Judy says, any hints for when we become anxious, but not time for a full meditation like the storm in a dream? Beautiful question. So, you know, when we do these exercises, I think of them as when we go to the gym and we lift weights to get stronger, right? But we lift those weights because we want to be able to do things in our daily life. We want to be able to be active daily. So these exercises are to help train our brain to calm down, to be more aware of our surroundings, to be more aware of our bodies, to be aware of things that we can let go of. Well, when you're having those little anxious moments, use this training to be able to take just one breath just one breath in and out. And that sometimes can make all the difference. Sometimes anxiety does get away from us. And so building this practice is helpful, but when you don't have time to sit and do 20 minutes, being mindful of what you can control at that moment, what you can't, what are the things that are making you so anxious, that can go a long way. If anxiousness is a problem, I always do recommend pairing it with psychotherapy because that can go a long way as well to, to help out, especially if you're already mindful of what's going on in your brain and in your body. Thanks, Dr. McEnany. Judy wrote that the minute also flew by for her, so nobody else is telling me that they had a challenging time with that minute. <laughs> Um, Lynn says a wonderful reminder to just take one breath and recenter. So the breath is very powerful because it is connected to our nervous system. So when we breathe, it automatically signifies to our brain that we can calm down. We can calm down, which is hard to do when you're in that kind of fight anxious stance. So, mm -hmm. and I saw a lot of questions about specific to Parkinson's. What do you do when your body is having tremors, when you might be having cramps, when other things might be going on in our bodies that distract you and take up a lot of your energy? During mindfulness, as much as possible, of course, staying safe where you are, try to not judge those thoughts, those body movements. If you are having tremors, let the tremors happen as long as you're in a safe place where you're not gonna fall or anything like that and try to be sort of give it a, a window of, um, of sort of resting from having to judge how much you are having a tremor, how intense they are, how much the pain is. 
it, the idea is to learn to observe those things, know that they are going on, but without judging them, without attending to them so much, but rather just knowing that they're there and they're going on kind of like a, maybe an annoying little brother that's kind of tugging at your shirt and you're not going to pay attention to them at that particular moment. So don't worry, the symptoms of Parkinson's come and go. Sometimes we know we deal with other medical conditions that also have, you know, it, it represents in the body. Mindfulness is a moment to allow those things to happen without judgment, without trying to control them necessarily. And just being respectful of your time, Dr. McInerney, there is one question in here and because we have the opportunity to ask an expert neuropsychologist, uh, what's, what's the difference between your brain and your mind? Oh, that's a philosophical question uh -huh. that I <laughs> hours and hours talking about. Um, so often they are used sort of interchangeably. Uh, when we think about the brain, we're often thinking about sort of the, the physical brain, right? The structure that is inside our skull. When we think about the mind, we're thinking more about our thoughts, our feeling, how those interact, our dreams, our hopes, our values. So it's it's a little bit usually talked about in a more sort of ethereal way, but it's still very real. It's what we're experiencing daily and how, how we're processing. Great, thank you. Uh, so we'll see everybody next Monday with Dr. Taylor Rush from the Cleveland Clinic. And let's just give our thanks to Dr. Catalina McInerney for her expertise and sharing her knowledge and mindfulness with us. And we'll welcome her back in July. So stay tuned. Looking forward to it. Thank you all for attending and for giving this a shot. Truly appreciate it and hope it helped. Thanks, Dr. McInerney. Bye, everyone. <laughs>